Hello, everybody. Hi, my name's Chad O'Carroll, and I'm the founder of NK News, which is a website I set up back in 2010. Uh, I originally had no intention of this becoming a business, um, but in this presentation, I'm just going to show you how far we've come and where we're planning to go in the next couple of years. So NK News, our goal is to be a provider of reliable, evidence-based news and information about North Korea. Uh, in addition to this, we also seek to accelerate the work of others who focus on North Korea by providing them with tools and databases they can't get anywhere else. For example, we have this tool called the North Korea Leadership Tracker, which lets you follow any elite within the North Korean leadership uh, going right back to 1994. So for most people, information, information in North Korea is a bit like this satellite imagery. It's a black hole. Um, when I got inter interested in the topic, it was certainly like this too. But the fact is there are 25 million people living in North Korea and the country has increasingly porous borders, which means more information is going in and out. Despite this, most people still write the country off as crazy, insane, irrational, or a, uh, you know, as goose-stepping soldiers. I went to North Korea in 2009 and quickly realized all of these uh, perceptions were largely incorrect. Um, and the trip was a real eye-opener. I saw things like this, a beach where people were enjoying the sun. Uh, it was nothing like the images of famine, mass poverty that I'd been sort of expecting to see based on the media reporting I'd witnessed. Uh, the, the upshot of this is this and subsequent trips to North Korea continue to um, uh, you know, direct how we're implementing our strategy today, which is to try and provide a granular and non-sensational look at what's going on inside the country. So we do this in two ways. On the one hand, we target specialist readers with intelligence level uh, information and news, uh, the research tools I've already talked about. And then we target generalist readers. Uh, and the interesting thing about them is Google search data shows that more people Google North Korea than any other developing country in the world. So there's a lot of interest that we're able to uh, harness. We have a pretty varied uh, revenue structure, which uh, brings in subscriptions through a paywall from 150 for those generalist readers, right up to 4,500 4, for uh, libraries, for example, in Ivy League schools, etc. We also syndicate. Uh, we syndicate to The Guardian and the, the Telegraph newspapers right now. Uh, while the revenue is not particularly high, they're great at building our visibility and giving us credibility. Um, this was our traction last year. We uh, a team of four and uh, some of our interns, one of who is at the back here, I'm pleased to say. <laughs> um, we, we managed to uh, pull in 150K of revenue, uh, signed up 29 institutions, uh, and you can see like th this interest in North Korea really, really does swell. Some months we get close to a million hits. Uh, on, on an average, it's around 200,000. This was really interesting. While here at CUNY, I decided to do a, a Kickstarter uh, campaign. And you might think it's counterintuitive for a, a, a newspaper or a news organization with a paywall to ask its readers to pay again. But as you can see, they did it. And we, we raised 166% of our goal, which uh, I was pretty chuffed with. <laughs> also, while here at, at CUNY, I was thinking maybe what we've got here could be scaled to other countries. Uh, and after a close analysis, I unfortunately decided it wouldn't be prudent to take uh, an offer of investment because I realized that it's a lot easier to try and uh, extract more rents from our existing audience than go out there and, and try and build something from scratch, even though Cuba is trending right now with the US and, and so on and so forth. So we're trying to raise $100,000, and it's purely to invest in building the institutional subscriptions. Um, we want to get to 100 by 2017, which if we do, will put us on course to have a healthy 600000 in revenue by that year and nearly a million in 2019. Um, we've got a good team to deploy this. I've been entrepreneurial since age 16 when 
in high school, I was selling uh, dodgy electronics equipment imported from uh, East Asia <laughs> to my schoolmates. Um, we've got Dr. Andrei Lankov, who's our main uh, contributor. He's a Russian who was invited to the White House to brief Obama last year personally because uh, White House policy is a bit of a mess right now on North Korea. And Leo and Hamish here, who are both really excelling in their, their areas. Uh, the great thing about this business plan is that all of it is built on a continuation of the status quo. So if something does happen in North Korea, a Ukraine situation, Syria, uh, Libya, there's going to be a surge in interest. And at that point, we're going to be in a great position to really um, uh, capitalize on that surge. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, listening to my presentation. Uh, as you can see, we're looking for investors, uh, co-founder material, contributors, and tech specialists. Thank you very much. Any questions for Chad? Go ahead. Uh, so great, great presentation. Uh, my question is, how, d how are you guys getting your news on the ground? Do you speak the Korean language? Uh, and and, and you know, who, are, who is your network of journalists? Yeah, uh, I speak a tiny bit. Um, I'm learning. Uh, my, several of my team members do speak Korean. Um, but everybody asks, I've answered this question several times today, how do we get news? So one of the things that sets us apart from the other outlets that cover North Korea is, number one, we're not South Korean. Number two, we're trying to do this through a non-agenda-based uh, lens. So we've actually managed to cultivate a nice little network of sources within the foreign community of you know, diplomats, aid workers, businessmen who are in North Korea regularly. And often they'll share tidbits with us that it may be more sensitive to share with some of the other media due to the you know, significant ideological divide between the two careers. <laughs> so do you just not, there's no ideology behind it? No, no, we, you know, we're not trying to um, uh, promote any vision for the future of North Korea because I think that's been done enough. There are lots of human rights groups who are working as news organizations and um, I think it's, it's better to just go through a, a factual lens and that sometimes means uh, stories that are positive about North Korea which uh, you, know, you might not hear otherwise. Mm -hmm.